so a vaccine, they develop a weak, a weaker version of the original virus, and they may, um, they inject it into your system, so your, uh, your system has memory of this type of virus. So when the real virus comes, they can defeat it quickly. Well, that's a pretty good description of how vaccines work. Hi everyone, I'm Delaney Rustin, physician and filmmaker of the Screenagers movies, and this is the Screenagers podcast. I've felt a real need to talk about vaccines at this moment in time. We're still waiting for a safe and effective vaccine for dealing with COVID. Since I first got interested in science and health in high school, I was always most interested in things that prevented illnesses. It just always made perfect sense to me. And you know, I really want to inspire right now conversations with our kids about vaccines to inoculate them with the awesome reality that there has been so much good that has happened thanks to vaccines. As doctors, we give regular vaccines that prevent 14 different infections, and there are several more vaccines to help with other infectious illnesses. It's incredible that these vaccines can keep disease at bay. But it disturbs me to think how misinformation about vaccines can spread more readily than ever via the internet. What happened in recent history to make fears around vaccination start to grow more vigorously? Here's an example of false information that got out in the world before even social media that led to so much harm. A British physician, Dr. Andrew Wakefield, submitted a research paper reporting findings that claimed that the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, called MMR for short, caused autism. The thing was, it was a lie. The data was fraudulent. The medical journal that published this research eventually found that out and retracted the paper. Unfortunately, the Wakefield paper did a lot of damage by leading people to be fearful of the MMR vaccine. And indeed, some parents did not give the vaccine to their children who ended up becoming ill, spreading it to others, and even dying from the infection. It's an ongoing issue. And now it is so easy with social media to have misinformation spread to the masses with one simple misinformed retweet or a misinformed share. False information can cause harm right away and can take lots of time to undo. I would say to Andrew Wakefield that you have done more harm to the children of the world than any other single individual that I'm aware of. That's Dr. Parker Small, researcher, immunologist, and pediatrician. You, Dr. Wakefield, lost your medical license in England because of misrepresenting the situation. There is no substantiation that MMR produces autism. Parker is my father-in-law and a leading expert in vaccines. He's been working on them for 50 years. Vaccines are perhaps mankind's best weapon for preventing illness. The worst infection in the history of the world was smallpox. It killed 25% of all births. 25% of everybody died of smallpox, a terrible death. For hundreds of years, one out of every four people died from smallpox. And if you didn't die from it, there was still a lot of suffering. It caused sores all over, and all of the survivors had deep pitted scars. This all eventually changed, in thanks part to Edward Jenner, who in England noted that People who were milking cows, these were primarily women and they were called milkmaids, they had a type of infection on their hands called cowpox. And he realized that having the cowpox somehow seemed to protect them from getting the really bad smallpox that was killing other people. It was this realization that helped him to create ultimately a vaccine against smallpox. It was because of Edward Jenner's discovery of vaccination, wherein he scratched the arm with cowpox, that 
200 years later, the World Health Organization was able to eradicate that terrible disease. By eradicate, I mean that we don't even have to vaccinate for it anymore. The virus is like the dinosaur. It is here no more. So what about COVID? In terms of COVID, there is the biggest collaborative sets of activity the biomedical world has ever seen. There are over a hundred COVID vaccines being worked on. Indeed, there are six vaccines that are far along in testing. And one that's really exciting that we just learned about from the company Pfizer. An interesting thing is going on that has never gone on before. And that is once you have proven that you've got a vaccine that works, then there's the job of tooling up to produce lots of it. They are right now building plants, assuming that the vaccine will work. Building all sorts of factories full of different types of equipment. Building plants so that they will be able to manufacture large amounts of it once the trial shows that it works. How is this unusual? Normally, nobody invests money in building a plant to make something before you know it's going to work. But because of this situation, they're building the plants and several of these plants will be built and then found the vaccine not to work that well. And that will all be wasted, but is necessary in order to speed access to this for those vaccines that prove to be effective. People are concerned, rightly, about the safety of vaccines, and we all want to be sure they're safe. The search for adverse effects of vaccines begins with the very first field trial. It is primarily designed to make sure that the vaccines do no harm. Parker calls it field trial, but you might have heard it called phase one. And phase two? Extends that work to a larger population to make surer that the vaccine does no harm. What are they looking for during these trials? Any symptom that they come down with, you make sure that it is not related to the administration of the vaccine. Only after it's been shown to be safe in these initial phase one and phase two trials do they move a vaccine to phase three, where they're testing the efficacy. They compare how often people who don't get the vaccine get an infection compared to those who get a vaccine. And they keep looking as well for any possible side effects. It's really exciting that we know now that one vaccine is looking really good in terms of efficacy and safety from the initial reports of the phase three trial. We all want to be sure that any type of vaccine we get for COVID will be safe and effective. So what are kids thinking about these vaccines? I asked this 10 year old if he had concerns. Well, there could be bad things like people would try to sell it like fake versions and maybe it would be really expensive. Fake versions? We can't have that. I'm so glad that people like Tony Fauci, Vivek Murthy, and David Kessler are all at the helm to lead in an effort to get us all safely protected. How do we better prepare ourselves for future disease outbreaks? Since COVID hit, I was really puzzled by why it was that there were outbreaks of other types of coronaviruses, i.e. MERS and SARS, and we weren't more prepared. Parker explains. Once the diseases went away, the work on vaccines for them basically stopped. In retrospect, that is now recognized as a terrible mistake. That was the time at which money should have been invested in developing vaccines for that type of virus so that at this point we would have had a vaccine much earlier. 
I asked Parker if there would be any way to prevent a future pandemic. I hope that one of the positive outcomes of this terrible pandemic will be an awareness that prevention is much cheaper than therapy and that prevention requires funding of research. So scientists are thinking a lot about this pandemic and prevention and vaccines. My goal is to make sure all this information gets to our kids. My dad told me about um, vaccines last year. Uh, I think I think it's flu shot season. And, uh, and I don't think I knew what it was. And he told me and I was like, oh, that's what it is. That's a nine-year-old that I interviewed a few weeks back. He's learned a lot from his father. Basically, I'm pretty sure it's a, a syringe and it has a little bit of the actual virus in it so your body gets used to fighting it. Pretty sure. And he knows the vaccine virus is not alive. Wouldn't it be great if we all talked with our kids and students and made sure they heard accurate information from us and from scientists about all that's happening to make sure that we get safe and effective vaccines and not let misinformation that is online distort their thinking. Maybe they can draw a picture by hand or use a creative online program to create a poster that shows all the safe vaccines we benefit from every day, the millions of lives that have been saved and continue to be saved. And then they can share their drawing or poster with families and friends using technology for good. So share this podcast with them and let's do this. That's it for our show today. And one quick thing. My new book, Parenting in the Screen Age, can be found at ScreenagersMovie.com as well as how you can watch the Screenagers movies right now with your kids and so much more. A big thanks to Dr. Parker Small, the youth I interviewed, my co-producer Lisa Tab. I'm Delaney Rustin, your host, producer and editor of the Screenagers podcast, and I can't wait till next time.